They're regular people. They work hard. They save for their dream vacation. But what do you do when the dream turns into a nightmare? When you're held captive on a virtual cruise from hell? Hello and welcome to Justice. I'm Judge Janine Pirro. It's Sunday morning, day three of a four-day cruise. Fire erupts and all the power goes out. And for the next five days, 4,200 people on Carnival's cruise ship Triumph are adrift on a ship without power. That means no hot water, no electricity, no running toilets, and no real food. So much for the unlimited buffet. So it left me looking for answers. What is the history of this ship? Did it have any previous problems? Alas, just a few weeks earlier, the same ship had an engine room problem that caused its cruises to be canceled. And lest I forget, this is a Carnival Cruise Line. Engine fires? Not really uncommon. Last year, the Costa Allegra, a fire in the engine room, causes it to go adrift. 2010, the Splendor, fire in the engine room, adrift. The Ecstasy, the Tropical, the Star Princess, the Royal Princess, each with their own problems. Yet my drift? So Since there was no why, water. We why was there no emergency plan in place? Passengers report total chaos, walking on urine soaked, feces encrusted floors, eating ketchup and onion sandwiches. And I brought some here for you, ketchup and onions. So I say, why wasn't food airdropped for these people? We do it for foreign countries all the time. People start hoarding food into their bags, into their backpacks, and running away with food. And then there was food sh shortages, and all of a sudden they kept stopping serving you know, food. So you'd go up, and there'd be no food, and you'd be waiting in line for hours on end. Why did it take so long to get a generator? Another cruise ship was able to drop off some hamburgers and chicken, from which it's reported many on the ship became sick and over which fights erupted for the food. Why was there no provision for wheelchair-bound passengers? Since the elevators didn't work, they were held captive on the floor that they were on. We're focused completely tonight on our guests and getting them uh, on their journey home. Really? When the power went out, if you were so focused on getting your guests home, the ship was 150 miles from Mexico, 500 miles from Alabama. The math is simple. Since the cruise is over the next day, go to Mexico, get them home. But the decision was made to go to Alabama. Could it be because it was cheaper to go to the States? Then you only have to bus people home, and they had about 100 buses, versus paying for airfare from Mexico? Plus, why put more miles on the ship? Could have been a, a serious catastrophe, really. So they're just very lucky that we didn't end up burning in the ship because no one, no alarms went off. They told us to go back to bed while the fire was burning. But isn't it interesting that the last night the passengers received for their last supper steak and lobster? So for their close-up, Carnival Cruise Lines doesn't allow that old ketchup and onion sandwich. The makeshift tests, the tents are down. The deck is pristine, no longer smelling of feces and urine. Urine strong enough to burn your eyes and the feces crusting on your toes. But then they had the music play on. So what is the recourse? The ticket language virtually limits the ability to recover and even sue. Maritime law bars passengers from recovering damages for emotional distress. So unless you've been physically injured, no damages. So I think Congress needs to get involved because the rights of cruise ship passengers are almost non-existent at a time when the business is literally exploding. So what's that you say? This will be investigated? Yes, but by whom? Oh yeah, the Bahamian government. 
Aren't they the ones who gave us the Anna Nicole Smith investigation? Isn't that where an attempt was made to blackmail John Travolta right after his own son died? I've always believed the punishment should fit the crime. So here's my sentence. All execs of Carnival, including the CEO, will be sentenced as follows. Their jail cell, a porta potty, and a smelly one at that. Conditions of their incarceration, that they walk in feces encrusted and urine soaked rugs. That they have no shower, no water, that they eat the old bread onions and ketchup sandwich. And they're fine? $10,000 times 4,200 people. And by the way, that includes the crew members who literally prevented an all-out mutiny.